opinions on new Jurassic World movie. I've actually seen it now. W why is it about locusts? Why is it about locusts? And then in Fallen Kingdom, we find out that, oh, hey, these are the only dinosaurs in the entire fucking world that are in, like, Jurassic World. And it's like, first of all, there were two entire movies that prove you wrong there. Second of all, how are people getting bored of dinosaurs to the point where you need to genetically engineer a new one to, like, get profits up? If fucking... If this is the only place in the world that you can go see them, if you have a monopoly on the concept of dinosaur theme park entertainment. You know SeaWorld doesn't have a monopoly on seeing orcas, but people still go to SeaWorld to see orcas specifically. And then at the end of Fallen Kingdom, it's like, oh, hey, dinosaurs are released into the world. Surely the sequel will be, a, will be about the consequences of the No, it's about fucking locusts. Giant locusts and a company trying to monopolize the food industry by making it so that their bioengineered food doesn't get eaten by the locusts they also bioengineered. The in, like the, the beginning scene of the movie, right? Like not not the beginning scene, I guess. Well, you know what? Yes, the beginning scene of the movie. A lot of the beginning of the movie, even though I like it in concept, is like it goes nowhere. It has nothing to do with pretty much anything for the rest of the movie. Because, like, there's the beginning scene that's the the sort of recap of, oh, hey, there's dinosaurs loose in the world now. This is a problem, I guess. Which, no, it's not. Farewell. Um, it's like this big, dumb newsreel thing. Or it's not dumb, I guess. Like, it's just it's, it's recapping what happens. But, barely anything to do with anything. The fact that dinosaurs are out and about in the world right now, really not relevant to the actual plot. Because everything is about locusts. There's like the scene where Claire and the two dorks from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom are like, Oh hey, we gotta go save these like baby dinosaurs from this illegal dinosaur breeding camp or whatever. Also pointless. Nothing to do with anything. Like, I initially thought it's going to set up this, like, character arc for Claire. Where it's like, oh, hey, she she's trying to absolve herself of her regrets from Jurassic World. No, that's really not followed up on later at all. And the people there barely show up again throughout the rest of the movie. Like, the screamy, annoying guy, who, thank God, is not screamy or annoying in this movie from Fallen Kingdom. He's just kind of, like, working for the CIA now. And he, like, he, he kind of helps get the plot rolling once the little girl is kidnapped, because the little girl gets kid. Oh, my fuck. Oh, there was so much bullshit to talk about! This movie is so dumb! Um, oh yeah, also, Blue the Raptor had a baby through Parthenogenesis. Which is technically important, but not to Blue or the baby. It's important to other bullshit. Like, both raptors are barely in the movie, honestly. Blue is, like, there right at the beginning and then right at the end. Which I find, like, an interesting decision, considering how prominent she was for most of the first two movies. Now she's basically, like, a cameo, more than anything. I don't mind too much, because... They managed to completely butcher the character of a dinosaur in Fallen Kingdom, which I don't even know how the fuck they did that. But anyway, that's not- that's... Moving on, right along. Yeah, Beta felt completely unnecessary. And yeah, then you like go to the Locust thing. Where it's like- I, I find it hilarious, right? That certain things like the Quetzalcoatlus and the Pyroraptor, they basically get their entire screen time from their appearance in the trailer. And then... The, the tiny lo the tiny shot of the locusts that takes up like a couple seconds of the trailer that's most of the movie and so she's like Alan Grant I need your help why eh. 
Like, I hate to say it because I love Alan Grant. I'm glad to see him back. Sam Neill, fucking love the man. But, um, he seems honestly kind of superfluous in this movie. She's like, oh, hey, uh, you're, you're a name that people trust, right? And I'm like, eh? It really seems like you just wanted to get him back so that he could, you know, run around from dinosaurs again. Like, I don't know. I think... I, I think that... With everything, with the whole dinosaurs roam the Earth plot, there could have been more organic ways to weave Alan Grant into the story. You know what I mean? That was fucking sick. Ah, damn it. Also, Biosyn in this movie, I, I... I don't really get them. I don't get, like, why in a world where dinosaurs are out and about creating, like... You know, untold havoc, causing untold deaths. They're just like, you know what? We should make even more dinosaurs. Like, let's let's make more. Why not? You know, the Apatosaurus, the Brachiosaurus. They're probably not causing enough property damage. Let's throw a Dreadnoughtus in there. And sure, they're, like, only being contained to the little valley or whatever. Except, no, they're fucking not. Because at the end of the movie, there's... There's a Moros Intrepidus, right? And that, that's a Biosyn made dinosaur, and he's just like hanging around fucking Washington, D.C. or something. What is he doing there? Why is he there? Also, what is the Giganotosaurus even doing there? Why would you make this? I'll, I'll be real. The Giga is nothing like the Joker. I don't know what the fuck Colin was talking about. Having seen the movie now, what the fuck was Colin talking about when he said that the Giga was like the Joker? The Giga is one half of the single most reserved dinosaur fight in the entire fucking series. Cause like, basically they introduce the T-Rex Biosyn, they capture the T-Rex, they introduce it into their big, like, sanctuary basically, alongside the Giga, and the Giga's like, oh hey, or T-Rex is like, oh hey a deer, I'm gonna eat this. And then the Giga comes along, he's just like, no, this is my deer. And they have a little tussle for it. And then the T-Rex, after taking a bite, just decides, okay, I'm gonna leave. Very reserved. Like something actual animals would do. It's just like, oh, I'm losing this fight? Okay, I'm gonna leave. See you later. <laughs> not, not what I would expect from an animal that just wants to watch the world burn. The scene where the Atrociraptors get let loose was so fucking infuriating to me. Because pretty much all the characters in the scene have guns. And the, the evil lady who is like commanding the Atrociraptors is just like, release them now. And they come out all slow and dramatic like, as the people have their guns trained on the dinosaurs, no one shoots them. It's like, shoot, shoot the raptor. Shoot the raptor. It was literally a plot point in the last movie that Blue spent half the fucking movie incapacitated because she took one fucking bullet to the gut. And they, they do the fucking Indoraptor thing again. They do it again where it's just like, point a laser at this person. And then the dinosaur will just like, try to kill them. It's like, you... What is this useful for that guns are not useful for? I don't understand. The little clone girl, not clone girl's mom. She had an incurable disease, and when she had her little clone baby, it was just like, okay, I'm gonna fucking give you this magic goop, because it's basically magic, that rewrites all the cells in your body so that you don't get the, the disease anymore. Damn it! All those posthumous kills. Yeah, and then why didn't she just cure herself? 
I don't know why. She's just like, you know what? This disease, this like thing I've made could be the answer to cancer, to any, pretty much any disease you want, you name it. And I'm going to test it out on my dumb little baby first. You know, what, just in case something goes wrong? Like, they never explain, like, oh, hey, it was too late for her to save herself. That's not saying they ever explain. Or, like, specify. It's just, like, fucking... You know, why, why wouldn't she? Why would you not use it on yourself? So that you can use the research that I guess you didn't write the fuck down? <laughs> Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. So, Biosyn... ...has a Hyperloop, right? Like an Elon Musk-ass Hyperloop. And I'm just like, oh god. Who paid you to put this in the movie? Like, every time they mention it, I'm just like, ugh. The only positive I can mention about it is like... Someone dies as a direct result of a Hyperloop malfunction. And it's just like... Well done. You actually got that right. Like, hey, these things are actually fucking dangerous by their core design. I'm glad you figured that out, and yet you somehow couldn't figure out... That, uh, that dinosaur is out in the world is a bigger deal than big locusts. How would you rate the movie? I mean, like, the stuff with the dinosaurs was decently fun, but, like, it didn't take up that much of the movie. There wasn't much to work on with the characters. If anything, I would say that, like, Jeff Goldblum was acting sometimes not just out of character but like not even really human like there's this one part where Alan, Ellie and the little clone girl are trying to escape from these amber mines full of dimetrodon and he's being weirdly casual, nonchalant and kind of quippy about it in a way that just felt really unnatural. How long was this movie? It was like fucking two and a half hours long or something. It was a long movie. And apparently, there, there just wasn't enough. Like, there was still so much stuff that apparently got cut out that an extended version needs to be made. With even more in it. Why do people doubt the Ambassador? Fucking seriously. A couple more things I gotta talk about. Apparently, right, Biosyn has implanted what are effectively these, like, mind control chips into the dinosaurs that can tell them, you know, basically all to go in one direction to one location, something like that, right? And in the event of an evacuation or some kind of emergency, like let's say for instance, uh, a big fire in, in the middle of the, the valley sanctuary spread by a, a bunch of locusts that happened to catch on fire. You know, some, something like that. They're meant to go into basically the big facility where all the fucking people are. Like, that is the dinosaur's evacuation destination. They are all meant to herd over there. And that is how we get the excuse for our big fight at the end. Right? The big fight between the T-Rex and the Giga. The rematch. And, um... It is pretty much exactly the fucking same as Jurassic World's finale, except replace Blue and the Mosasaurus with the Therizinosaurus. 
I don't know why. I don't know why the Therizinosaurus. I thought it was just gonna be like a fucking one scene wonder like the Quetzalcoatlus and the Pyroraptor. No! It's a fucking tag team match! And like, with Jurassic World, you had a little something going for you, right? Because you had the Indominus, which is made of T-Rex and Raptor DNA. And so the T-Rex and the Raptor, they come together to be stronger than the Indominus. It's dumb, but you know what? I'm okay with it. It's, it's also especially dumb because then the Mosasaur comes to finish it off, which has nothing to do with that entire conflict, but whatever. A point is being made in Jurassic World. Which is just like, the original dinosaurs, they're always going to be better than, the, than this hybrid shit. But in, in fucking Dominion, the Therizinosaurus just joins in on this tag team match and fights the Giganotosaurus so that the T-Rex can then shove it into the claws of the Therizinosaurus and win the fight. And then they just act like they're buddies. They just, like, roar triumphantly together. Yeah, and, like, once the whole tag team thing starts, it's over in, like, one shove. The Giga just, like, he looks at both of the... He looks at both of his combatants like someone with overchoice of food at a buffet, and he's just like, oh, gosh. Uh, oh, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. And then the T-Rex roars, and then he, like, shoves the Giganotosaurus. G fucking Giganotosaurus. Stupid fucking movie making me mispronounce the name of a dinosaur. I, I think they're both valid, but it's like it's the, it's the dumb pronunciation. The final fight is also really dumb because it's like it has nothing to do with anything. Like it is the entire the, the final fight is really intrinsic to both finales of the last two movies. Cause like we can't let the Indominus Rex get to all these people, because it'll kill them all. And we can't let the Indoraptor live because it's an abomination against God. But yeah, with the final fight in this movie, it's like... A Alan so much as says, this isn't about us. And then they all just try to run to the helicopter so that they can escape. It has nothing to do with them. It is just a thing that happens for the sake of having a big final dinosaur fight in the middle of your escape scene. Why aren't the dinosaurs trying to kill them? Because... The T-Rex is trying to get revenge on the Giga for uh, killing it 65 million years ago, even though the Giganotosaurus predated the T-Rex by about 30 million years and uh, lived a full continent away. So... Well, I so say you're gonna try and make the dinosaurs more realistic if you just- if you just fucking don't. If you just fucking don't. If a shark can hold a grudge, as per the well-known documentary Jaws 2, so can a dino. Don't forget the even better known documentary, Jaws 4, The Revenge. I will now proceed to drink my Jurassic World Dominion sponsored Dr. Pepper Cherry with a Dilophosaurus on it. Like, there were some fan service things I was happy to see. Or it's just like, hey, you're not particularly great at writing, but you care about this franchise, and you know what? That's better than Star Wars has. <laughs> Hopefully the new Avatar movie doesn't suck. Oh yeah, they're coming out with fucking... <laughs> like three new Avatar The Last Airbender movies. Like what is it, Kyoshi, Zuko, and Korra? Cause we gotta go- we gotta go back to Korra. And you got like the live action fucking Netflix series that was a headshot, you can't tell me it wasn't. Yeah, why live action anything when Avatar works so well animated? And I honestly think it's cause they want to redo things that they thought were mistakes in the original. Except now, it's with none of the old showrunners, not even Bryker coming back. We all knew Aaron Eahouse was never going to be a part of this. But now we don't even have Bryke. 
And Korra, for all of its problems, it's at least a watchable show. And Korra has a lot of problems. I have a very long script written about just some of the problems Korra has. See, you can't even claim that Korra is amazing at literally everything. Because she's not. She's only amazing at things when the plot lets her to be. But when they need to have tension, it's just like, oh hey, you're shit at fighting now, by the way. Season 1 has so many problems. Like, I feel like the worst, like the biggest problem you could say that Season 1 of Avatar has is... It, it's got a lack of direction. They, they were just sort of getting their footing still. Season 1 of Korra has worse things you could say about it. Most of the main cast are fucking worthless. Okay. Season 1 Zuko is still a good villain. It's not like he only starts to get good in Season 2 or Season 3. I guess you could say that Zhao is a little bland. Like, there's not all that much to him. But I feel like that's the worst you could say. You can't say that his plans literally make no sense. His plan almost works! Yeah, you get, like, all of Zuko's backstory, like, halfway into Season 1 of Avatar. Meanwhile, in Korra, Amon's backstory is given to you in a last-minute exposition dump because otherwise people would have no idea what the fuck is going on. Even if you had no context for Zuko, like you have the context for the entire war and you'd understand why someone from the Fire Nation would want to capture the Avatar. That's all you need. With Amon, you have no idea how he has this power. You have no idea why he wants to like stop the Avatar, or eradicate bending, or any of that shit. There's no context for it. Until... Tarlock gives his last minute exposition dump speech. And then Korra gets the fucking 9000 IQ idea of saying, Hey everybody! Amon is a waterbender! And he's just like, no I'm not. Uh, yeah you are! No I'm not. Prove it! Like, is it just because, oh hey, my dad used bending in order to abuse me and my brother, and therefore I will use my bending to eliminate all bending. There's also no explanation for how he even figured out that, um, oh yeah, blood bending, which can now be done without the aid of a full moon, can uh, be used to completely erase someone's bending, unless, of course, <laughs> they happen to be the avatar and just... Haven't learned one of those bending elements yet. Because that's how that works. <laughs> like, if I cut off your hands... But you <laughs> if I shove you into a meat grinder... And I cut off your hands... But you haven't learned how to play piano yet, you can still learn it! It's just... it's... It's also tiresome, you know? Avatar was a good show. Like, if you just ignore Korra as a series, then sure, it doesn't hurt Avatar. But if you don't ignore it, then it kind of does. Especially with what happens in Season 2. With everything regarding, like, Rava and Vatu, like, Oh, hey, the Avatar is basically completely retconned as a concept. Because no one bothers to mention them. Roku never bothers, Kyoshi never bothers, no, 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 it's not important. Oh, and then season 2 also implies that Aang was a shitty dad who played favorites with his one airbending son. So yeah, thanks for that, I guess. That's really sick. We really needed that bit of character development. Can you just fucking imagine they make like a third Avatar series about fucking... Like, Earthbender Avatar Bofo. The Legend of Bofo. And it, and it happens to explain 
that uh, Korra and Asami's relationship was actually really abusive. Like, they just explain that. They just, like, throw that in there. Like, can you imagine how fucking insulted all, all, all of the Korra Asami fans would be? And just fans of Korra in general. Like, they have to invent these ways for her to get involved that make the connection personal to her. Like, the one starting this civil war between the North and South Poles is Korra's uncle, it just so happens to be. And uh, all these terrorists that have escaped are people who tried to assassinate Korra when she was a baby. And, you know, they're trying to assassinate her now because they want to get rid of the Avatar. And it's like... If it wasn't for those tenuous little connections... Then why would Korra be the protagonist except, like, oh, this is just a bad thing she has to stop. Because she's the Avatar and that's her job and you gotta deal with it. I like Korra and her character in concept. In execution, though, it's just, it's so bad. It's so, like, bafflingly bad that I, I don't know how it even happened. Because, like, the inverse of Aang, right? Where you got the pacifist in a violent world. Fucking bugs in my face. Um. You got someone who almost wants to fight. Who wants to be the Avatar. And then when, like, you know, you have a villain that can take that away from them. Oh, shit. That, like, takes away my entire identity. That's terrifying. That's good. That's some really good stuff there. Wish you did anything with it! Because the thing with Amon is, the thing that was really cool, is he's not someone who you can just beat by punching him in the face. Because he represents the idea of inequality. That's not something you can just punch in the face and then win the day. But then it's like, in order for her to overcome that, you need for her to grow, you know, emotionally and intellectually so she can overcome this. And maybe even spiritually, if it's something that Amon has to, like... Like, imagine if Amon was just gifted the power of energy bending so he could take away people's bending by some spirit. And it's just like... Oh, so he's really connected with the spirits in a way that even the fucking Avatar isn't. Maybe there's some... Maybe this guy's got a point. Because, hey, if, if the fucking spirits agree with him... But they don't agree with the Avatar, then I don't know, maybe there's something there. That would give a lot of credit to him. But then, you discredit Amon by making him a liar for no reason. Because I guess you needed to have a twist, right? Filthy Casual donated $2. So you're saying Korra lives in a society. She's the Joker of Avatar. She just wants the world to burn so she can save it. <laughs> Ironically, that's not too far off from her character. But yeah, but by discrediting Amon, you suddenly make it a good idea to just punch him in the face and win the day. Because, like, who the fuck cares about him? He's not making an actual point anymore, even though, yes, he technically is. A point is still being made, it's just that the person making the point you know, is being discredited. And so once it becomes a good idea to simply punch him in the face, then she becomes shit at fighting. Because now we need to have tension. Otherwise, she would murder Amon with no remorse. And because Korra is supposed to be, like, good at fighting, you need to invent these ridiculously overpowered abilities like psychic bloodbending that can be done without the aid of a full moon or this spirit tentacle mumbo jumbo that is literally never once explained or you just nerf the shit out of her once she has the avatar state for no fucking reason i cannot think of a single fight that Korra wins with the avatar state i don't think it exists like, Sokka is probably my favorite character in Avatar next to Zuko, maybe. Like, Sokka's great. I think that, like, next to Aang, Sokka is probably the most indispensable member of Team Avatar. 
Like, they would have gotten nowhere without him. And it's just like, he barely gets a mention. He shows up once, he talks about his boomerang, and then he's gone. God, I didn't expect to go into a fucking Jurassic World Dominion and a fucking Legend of Korra rant, both within the same stream. That's too much. That's too much anger.